Hey everyone, it is Kristen from the library here again with a short tutorial for you on cartoon drawing. Hello. What's important to know is that this will take practice and you'll have an easier time of doing dynamic poses and shapes if you understand the underlying structures of them first. So drawing from life, looking at skeletons, and studying how people and things all move are a great way to build up your understanding of that structure. So. Cartoons are basically shapes, even the most complicated ones. Most commonly, it tends to be this sort of bean shape. A bean is easy to draw, organic, and lends itself to movement naturally because it's going to be different at every angle. And that works for faces, bodies, sometimes even cars and things like that. By breaking a character down into different shapes, basically stacked on top of each other, it makes it easy to draw certain characters at multiple angles because you can always predict where something's going to be on them. And once you have that, you can then draw the character over and over again, because it's fairly predictable at that point. Variation is important, though. You might be familiar with how artists use guiding lines to help with placing features on faces. And also, this is used for bodies and things like that. It's just a generally useful practice to help figure out where to place things. Well, when you stretch those guiding lines a little bit, it helps to create emphasis on certain features. So. Say, in this case, we have a little sad man. Moving them down will create a character with a large forehead, while increasing the distance between, say, the eyebrow and nose line ends up creating much larger eyes and kind of a smaller mouth as a result. You can have a character that is naturally like this, or you can use this to really push um, certain emotions or expressions. You can exaggerate. So in that case, it's just temporary. Look at old Looney Tune animations. If you pause at random, you might see characters stretched out in really exaggerated, kind of unnatural ways. In animation, this is actually called squash and, stre squ uh, squash, sorry, and uh, stretch. Or you might see eyebrows floating off of faces, and smiles floating off of faces, sometimes smiles that are larger than can possibly fit on a face, and so on. You don't have to push it quite so much. Uh, but it's good to understand it and it's something that you can use to good effect in small doses. Play around with it and see what looks right to you. The amount you exaggerate can turn a happy grin into a slightly more scary and manic one. And remember, whenever you do these um, squashing sort of um, features when you move one up or one down, it is going to interact with the other portions of, in this case, a face, and it will squish. So think of your shapes as fairly organic when one butts up against the other, it's going to interact and kind of squish up. Thus, squash and stretch. A variation in shapes is also important though. While a bean is easy, you can use literally any shape. So go ahead and draw a lumpy potato or a lopsided rectangle. I have a weird kind of beak shaped thing, sure. Round shapes tend to feel friendly, while more pointy shapes feel more edged and dangerous. You can of course mix and match though, and how you use them will kind of change up how they feel. The weirder the shape, the more dynamic something tends to be. You can also, um, doing this can also make it a bit harder to draw though. Remember that cartoon shapes are essentially simple shapes. People have to draw or animate the same character over and over and over again. Even when you're drawing it, you still want it to be fairly simple so that you can replicate it all the time. If you give yourself a lot of details, you might hate yourself in the f future because you then have to draw all those details. So when you're designing a character like this, just keep in mind how much you're going to be drawing it because that will inform how busy you tend to make things. So we have our lumpy potato or a little weird rectangle. Now that we have it, it's time to push the line of action. You can use something called an action line to do this. So in a quick motion, uh, just draw a line across the page. A slight curve does tend to help. Now you're going to build your character's pose along top of that line. If you position limbs, accessory, or whatnot against it, you will create a sort of visual contrast that can also create interest. This can also be a little bit jarring. You can really push this, um, 
and exaggerate just like you can with expressions and things like that. So you might end up having a extreme uh, perspective angle. So a uh, forced perspective rather, where you have a head very, very close and perhaps the feet very, very far away. So I will show you that on my little line here and I will get back to you after. There we go. An action line is basically a guide. If you make your shapes more exaggerated to follow it, you end up reinforcing it, which can recreate a really dynamic piece. In this case, I have my arms are all following this sort of blocky shape. The chest and body, of course, follows. All the limbs kind of end up echoing that sharp angled shape, whereas the cape is more curved to follow the action line. They all kind of reinforce each other. But you can do this much more subtly too. Uh, for example, grab a photo of literally any superhero, a famous star, or a character from the film even that's in a dynamic pose and try to find the action line. Every dynamic pose will have one. And it's a lot of fun to try and figure out where exactly it is. For a lot of press shots, you might end up seeing kind of a S-curve sort of happening. I'll add some resources in the links below, uh, which you can use to learn some more about this. I'll also put up some different examples on the screen here for different stars. Uh, a lot of this comes, as I said at the beginning, with practice and how much you really want to push it. Whether you use this a lot or very little, kind of knowing how to use your lines to place things and then how to exaggerate based off that is important. Remember squash and stretch. Even in a very subtle way, in say, uh, real life, even a smile will make you crinkle your eyes. So when you're drawing, whether you're doing cartoons or something more realistic, just keep that in mind. Every shape you have will have an, act an interaction with something else. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to hear. Um, we do have at the library uh, some books actually on this, which continue to expand on the topic in a much better way than I can. I do recommend them. Uh, feel free to give us a call. We will be open throughout the week. Place your holes and we can schedule a pickup. <laughs>